right, hello and welcome back to Dream Daddy. Uh, this is Eldritch Mortician. Yancey is not joining me tonight, but I think we'll still have a good time. We are going to go ahead and continue the uh, adventures of Joseph Seed, Dad. second there I thought it froze. All right I pull up to the carpool and Amanda hops in the passenger seat. So did you have fun gossiping about me? Mr. Vega and I asked, actually gossiped about our celebrity crushes. <laughs> so you talked about Mario Batali the whole time? Um, um, out of game I'm actually not sure who that is. It was a very productive meeting. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty hungry. Can we grab some dinner? Sure thing. Um, be more economical to make something at home, but um, going to the mall food court sounds likely to have more encounters with interesting people. So let's go to the mall food court. Does that sound good to you? Hmm. Yeah, sure. Sure. Why the mall? Jeez, can't a dad take his daughter to the mall? Mm -hmm. Will you buy me things? I will buy you a thing. Singular. Sounds like a deal to me. Huh. We drive in silence for a short while. Amanda plays a game on her phone. I should say something. You know, sometimes when a get kid gets older, they find that they have to keep hit things hidden from their parents. And that's okay, because sometimes that's what kids do. And that's okay. But it's also sometimes it's good to have the parents' perspective, because, you know, maybe the parents also have dealt with similar situations. Hmm. And maybe they're a little cooler than you give them credit for. Anyway, what I'm trying to say is that it's good to share. Love you. Have you been reading my tweets? You have a Twitter? Hmm. What? Never mind. Look, sweetie, Mr. Vega said you haven't been participating in class and that you're not turning things in. Ah. No, I'm fine, Pops. Senioritis and all that. I thought you liked Mr. Vega's class. Mm -hmm. It's fine. He's fine. Yeah, he's fine. Pull up to a stop and I I Amanda. She's still texting. Just, I want you to know that you can talk to me about anything. Ugh. Uh-huh. I can tell that whatever it is, she doesn't want me knowing about it. That's frustrating. Um, I heard Emma R is going to that fancy art school in California. That's exciting. Yep. Are you bummed that you guys aren't going to the same school? Yep. Hmm. Amanda keeps te texting. She stifles a laugh. What's so funny? Uh, it's a... I don't think you'd get it. Okay. Who are you texting? Ah. Uh. Noah. Who's Noah? My friend. Does he go to your school? Hmm. Yep. You like Noah? Whoa! What? Oh. No. Dad. Ugh. I can't believe you would... Ugh. Dad. I mean, jeez. Why would you... Ugh. Gross. Sorry, sorry, just asking. Dad, he's just my friend. Guys and girls can be friends. He's my friend. Mm. I, I know, okay. Jeez. This is going well. Well, good talk. Love you, kiddo. She leans forward and turns up the radio. I guess the conversation is over. To the mall, then.
We arrive at the mall, a big indoor shopping center with a couple different floors. Kind of dead, but that doesn't stop a mall security guard from yelling group of loitering teens. Let's eat something disgusting for dinner. Yeah! Hell yeah! Language, Missy. Mm. Heck yeah. Better. Mm. Fuck yeah. You approach the food court and evaluate our options. There's greasy, a greasy restaurant after greasy restaurant. My heart burns just looking at the menus. Nobody looks happy to be here. What are you in the mood for? Your bread dipped in sugar, bread with cheese on it, or do you just want me to inject some fat directly into your bloodstream? <clears throat> I extend my hand to her. Would you do me the honor of sharing some nachos? <laughs> she takes my hand with a grin. <laughs> it would make me the happiest, cheesiest girl alive. We ordered a giant pile of chips and a naturally orange cheese from a very unenthusiastic and possibly stoned teenager. We take a seat at a rickety table and dig in. <laughs> These are bad. These are very bad. But also strangely de delicious. Mm. We have to eat through the pain. We enjoy the fluorescent cheesy goodness together until we're all out of nachos. So. Uh. Something's been bothering me for a while. Can you explain memes to me? Hmm. <laughs> Which meme? All? All memes? Yeah, yeah, that would be my reaction, too. Aww. <laughs> wow. That is complicated. See, memes are inside jokes shared by a bunch of people that get less funny the more people do it. So the problem is that by the time a meme gets you, Dad, all us youths have already done the joke to death. Ugh. And what's worse than that is that movies and TV and video games will try to jump on a meme train, but just based on how long it takes to make them, the meme will be long dead by the time it comes out. So it just states it, and it isn't funny. Oh shit, what up? Ugh. Dad, please. Eh? Anyway, changing the subject. Where to now? Want to go to that goth store? I want to go to the mm -hmm. goth store. What? You know, the one that's all black and tries to establish itself as anti-establishment, despite being an exact rep representation of the establishment? I don't know what store you're talking about. You know, the one where you can buy chain wallets and it's basically an assault on whatever people fought so hard against the punk and hardcore movements. Uh, so hard against in the punk and hardcore movements of the 70s and 80s? Huh? Dude, you gotta be more specific. The one you threw up in that one time? Hey. Oh, that one. into the store with me trailing behind her. She makes a beeline for the back. Yeah, that's, um... That kind of looks like Spencer's and Hot Topic had a baby together. All right. There it is. You can still see the outline, kind of. I'm so proud. Speech. Amanda. Hey! Speech, 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 speech. All right, I'll do it if you just stop chanting. <clears throat> Thank you all for joining us here today to commemorate a historic moment that would forever shape history. On a day very much like today, some five years ago, my our very own Amanda Ann Seed had too much re blue raspberry slushy on an outing to the mall. Oh. After begging her father to take her to Dead Goth and Beyond, okay, Dead Goth and Beyond is an amazing store name. Possibly also a band name. To buy rainbow suspenders, she proceeded to throw up all over a display of My Chemical Romance merchandise. Her loving father then had to pay for said merchandise, which to this day remains among our possessions. Thank you. Huh. Amanda's moved. She begins clapping, slow at first, then faster and more vigorously. Several patrons turn their heads. One of them also starts clapping. I bow my head. All right. Oh, hey, chain wallet. Well, Amanda busies herself looking at band t-shirts, I try to find something of interest to myself. Not much for a dad to look at in a de dead goth and beyond. Surely there can be a band t-shirt that you can make. <clears throat> oh. 
<laughs> Cannibal Bone Party. A mediocre band name, I think. <laughs> Very important. Oh, I think we might get the, meet the goth. Yes! I overhear a stifled argument over at the cash register. An older gentleman is sharing garment and showing it to a bored looking cashier with pink hair. I can see that. Don't know what to tell you, dude. I just work here. Ah! Listen, when I bought this online, a website that said this blouse was, in, was Victorian inspired. However, when I received it, it clearly held the trademark of Edwardian dressage. You want a coupon? I can give you a coupon. Will you leave if I give you a coupon? Hmm. Is there a manager present? People have to know what they're buying. Oh, come on, dude, don't be a Karen. I am the manager. Huh. I see. Well, it would see that I've seen that I've outstayed my welcome. Good day, shopkeep. Your superiors will see receive a strongly worded letter by post. Whatever, dude. <clears throat> Man whirls around and storms out, his literal coattails trailing behind him. I can't tell if they are Victorian inspired or Edwardian in nature. Amanda trots up to me with a t-shirt in her hand. Oh boy, here it comes. Mm -hmm. Hey, Dadtron 5000. Yes, I'll buy it for you. <laughs> wow, that was easy. Thanks. At least it's only one this time. Amanda plops the shirt on the counter and grins at the cashier. <laughs> I love your hair. Huh. The cashier says nothing and brings Amanda up, radiating hatred. I hand her a 20. So what was that guy's deal? The cashier rolls her eyes so hard that I'm worried she'll pull something. That's Damien. He's in here all the time. He's obsessed with Victorian fashion or whatever. She hands Amanda her bag and it's clear the conversation is over. We make our way out of the store and head home to get some rest. Amanda and I sit on the couch, trying to find something to watch over Bubbles of ice cream. <laughs> oh, cool. Long haul paranormal ice road ghost truck truckers. Is wow. Your favorite, right? Oh, hell yes. They have to make it over the Canadian tundra before the ice road melts, but they're also hunting ghosts. Eh? Also, the trucks are haunted. Ooh. This is an episode I've already seen, but it's one of the best. Callum and Flint Dog Bone. The twin brother truck driving and ghost hunting duo find themselves in the greatest peril yet. Oh no, the ghost caught control of the truck. I can't steer on them damn ice them there damn ice roads. Let me use this EVP meter to try and communicate with the spirits. Flint, we're about to die. Ah, almost got it. If you listen carefully, it sounds like it's saying you're going to die. Mm -hmm. That's because we are about to die, you. <laughs> this is art. Yes, yes, this is. Episode ends and Amanda excuses herself to go and start arguments on the internet. Stay up a little longer curious about the exploits of Callum and Flint Dogbone after the disastrous rice, ice, road, ice road accident. Afterward, I crawl into bed and get a good night's sleep. Morning, sleepyhead. Five more minutes. You have never let me have five more minutes, so get up. Fine. <clears throat> we have cereal for breakfast and spend the morning putting together furniture. Amanda is much better at interpreting the tiny manuals. We're able to put together a few shelves and one desk, but I'm pretty sure it was supposed to be a bookcase. Ah. So, are you excited for the cookout today? Oh yeah, that's today. With the guy in pastel. But cookouts usually have good food. I'm all over those terrible store got sugar cookies that everyone brings to parties. Those are terrible. 
Yeah, those are bad. Which means there are more for me. Hmm. Don't you want to meet some of the people in the neighborhood? I'll probably end up standing uncomfortably in the corner with a plate of food and hope know that, that nobody talks to me. That's, that's how I do parties, too. Ah. Dad, you're a beautiful work in progress. We'll get that butterfly to emerge from the cocoon. Oh. The social butterfly. Well, we better start getting ready. We definitely don't want to be late. What? What? No, we have to be fashionably late. Who shows up to a cookout on time? You know what? We're going early just because you said that. I head out the door and Amanda reluctantly follows. We walk across the street to Joseph's house with a store-bought veggie plate. Not a terrible cook if it doesn't involve a grill. Hmm. I guess we're not as early as I thought we were. Joseph's backyard is already packed with people and the smell of hot dogs wafts through the air. Small children run through a sprinkler and adults chat in small clusters. Set our veggie plate down on a table next to two other veggie plates. Huh. Everybody always brings veggie plates and then they just go to waste, especially the broccoli. Hey, there's Joseph. Hello, other Joseph. The moment he sees us, he jogs over, arms open wide. Oh. Welcome, I'm so glad you two are here. And you brought veggies. <laughs> Let me introduce you to my family. Kids, come over here. This is Chris, my eldest. Eh. Hi. Oh, he looks delightful. Oh. This is Christian and Christy. They're twins. Hey. They stare creepily and say nothing. Come and play with us, Danny. Play Aye. with us forever and ever. And there's our youngest, Grish. Grish? Wait, where is Grish? Maybe Mary put him in his crib. Oh no, it's the woman from the bar the other night. What is she doing here? <laughs> oh, and how could I forget my lovely wife, Mary? Well, this is awkward. Mm. Joseph pecks her on the cheek. She smiles. Ah, oh, Mary, sweetheart, did you put Grish to bed? Hey. I'll have to go look for him. Have to go look for him? You you, you lost the baby? Mm. What? You'll have to. Oh. <laughs> this takes a moment and regains his composure. <laughs> Mary, this is our new neighbor, Joseph, and his daughter, Amanda. Hmm. I shake your hand, but I have a glass of wine that I need to tend to. I love her. Nice to uh, meet you, Mary, for the first time. Charmed. Well, I've got to get. You have to go over there now. Mary leaves. Oh god, this is so awkward. I wonder if Joseph knows. I wonder if Mary knows that Joseph knows. I wonder if Joseph knows that Mary knows that I know. It takes all of my energy not to run away from the barbecue and start fresh in a new city. <laughs> <laughs> my wife has a wonderful sense of humor, but please, you two enjoy the barbecue. All the guys are really excited to meet you. Amanda and I mill around and try some of the food spread out on the table. Pick at some deviled eggs. Amanda gra grabs a small paper plate and immediately begins piling it with baked goods. I don't want to make friends. <sighs> Come on, Dad. Who are you going to party with when I go off to school? But I don't want to have to do pleasantries. Hmm. Dad. Ugh. They're going to talk about the weather. Ugh. Go do it. Make a friend. How could I possibly abandon my only child at a social function? That's bad parenting. <laughs> Plate of cookies is my new dad. Bye. Amanda shoves me into the center of the yard. Well, here goes nothing. Look around the party and I'm surprised to see some familiar faces. Isn't that the barista from the coffee spoon? Didn't I meet that guy at the bar? Oh, it's just getting more and more awkward. Didn't that guy throw a frisbee at my head? Isn't that the guy that was throwing a fit in Dead, dead Bath and Beyond? Isn't that Amanda's teacher? Hey, I know Craig. But wait a second, all of these people live in our cul-de-sac? That can't be right. I'd better investigate. Um. Well, talking to Robert is going to be super awkward, so we'll avoid that as long as we can. Um, 
let's talk to the guy with the alky wife and the goth guy. Spot Joseph chatting with the guy from Dead Death Beth, Dead Goth and Beyond. I really like that store name. By the grill. <clears throat> I wonder what they're talking about. I walk over to them. Mm. So I'm curious, can you walk me through why you had your house painted black? Huh. Where do I even start? The house stays warmer in the winter. It provides an artistic contrast with the rest of the neighborhood. That complements the crim crimson interior perfectly. Uh. It's definitely an interesting choice. And these guys look like good and bad shoulder angels when they stand together like that. Oh, thank you. I'm very proud of my abode. Oh. Joseph. Brother Joseph, I was just having a conversation with Damien here about his aesthetic design choices decisions. Damien regards me up and down with a warm but critical eye. How do you do? I don't believe I've had the pleasure. I think I saw you in Dead Goth and Beyond the other day. Damien's face turns bright red. I must apologize for my behavior on that day. You see, I take the goth lifestyle very seriously. To be caught in a ruse by such a corporation as Dead Goth and Beyond was profoundly frustrating indeed. Huh. I hope you know that while my anger may have been justified, it was no such way it was no such way for a gentleman to act. It's okay, man. Uh. Do tell me about yourself. Are you new to the area? Yes, my daughter and I just moved in the other day. She was the one I took to Dead Goth and Beyond. Uh -huh. Very good taste on her part. Does she t partake in the goth lifestyle? I think for a second. I look over to Amanda, who's hanging out with some of the older kids in the neighborhood. What? Hey, Amanda, would you consider yourself goth? Amanda yells back. I wouldn't necessarily try to fall under any one specific label, but I guess if I had to choose, I would more describe myself as a twee hipster with some nom norm core leanings. Bats are cool, though. Ah. Uh. Ah, pity. Hmm. Are you enjoying the party so far? Oh, definitely. Thanks so much for putting this on. It's nice to be in a cul-de-sac where everyone is so friendly and welcoming. Yeah. Amanda walks up to the conversation. <laughs> I also like The Lost Boys a lot. Really good movie. Does that count as goth? Uh -huh. That it would, my dear. I don't believe we had the pleasure of meeting. Damien Bloodmarch, at your service. That is... So, not the name you were born with. Yeah, it's cool, don't get me wrong, but you totally chose that. Damien finishes the sentence with a flourish and a bow, producing a single rose and offering it to Amanda. But hey, he's cool. Huh. Amanda blushes and returns the ge gesture with a curtsy. <laughs> My, do you know how to treat a lady? What? Christian and Christy. Hello, Amanda and Unison. Come and play with us, Amanda. Seemingly out of nowhere, Joseph's twins' kids appear. Uh, they're speaking in unison. Huh? Uh, hey. Won't you come play? Oh my god. Huh? Uh. Come play with us. Forever. You creepy little bastards. Oh. Guys, enough with the creepy twin shtick. We talked about this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Christian and Christy slowly back away. Jeez. Where do you think they got that from? <sighs> Mary pops into the conversation, wine in hand. Goody. Uh. I uh, don't know. Probably because Mary was drunk and let them watch the fucking shining. Mary takes a long sip of the wine. Oh my god. I think I might have taped over a Veggie Tales VHS with The Shining. Who knows? Mm hmm. Pretty much what I said. Takes another sip of her wine. Now, I'm just saying this is somebody who really likes wine. Really likes wine. So, you know. <laughs> Where's Krish? Come on. Wasn't he with you? Ugh. You had him a moment ago. You uh. keep losing the baby. He's probably stuffing dirt in his mouth. He'll be all right. Toddlers are pretty resilient. Mary tips her glass to me. Mm. Ain't my first time to the rodeo. It's my fourth. Ugh. 
I have squeezed four little uh, yeah. sweetheart. Would you do me a favor and please find Krish? That would be great. Oh my god. I'm sure he's fine. Mm. Mary. Ah. Okay, geez. Mary finishes her wine and wanders off. Dad, can we go now? Hmm. Ah, Lucian, have I introduced you to Joseph yet? New Joseph, not regular Joseph. Hey, it's that punk from Amanda School. I remember you. Whatever. Huh. It's no way for a young man to speak to his elders. Be polite. Lucian bows. Whatever, sir. Lucian bows again. I don't think he's being sincere. Mr. Christensen, may I have a veggie burger, sir? <laughs> I mean, right up, bud. Are you vegetarian? Yep. <laughs> Make that two veggie burgers. Do you know that some people in the Victorian era, era were vegetarians? They describe carnivorous type people of, as blood lappers. Dad. Oh. That's really interesting, Damien. This turns to a grill. Just a hint of a tattoo peeks out from underneath his sleeve. I can't believe I didn't notice it before. Looks like the bottom of an anchor. Whoa, is that a tattoo? Whoa! Yep. I wasn't always a youth pastor, you know. That's so cool. Want to see mine? What? Apparently Damien didn't know about that. Lucian pulled back some rubber bracelets, revealing a lopsided 666 in black ink. My buddy gave me a stick and poke tattoo last week. I think it's healing up pretty good. Wow. Lucian. <sighs> Talk about this later. Um. <clears throat> That's pretty cool. What's the significance of the tattoo? Says the church guy. Pretty sure he's just baiting the kid now. I don't know. I just thought it looked sick. Oh. Well, in my opinion, the only reason you need to get a tattoo is because you want one. Careful note, though, that number carries weight. Man, Joseph is way cooler youth pastor than I thought. I just figured youth pastors popped out of the womb with a Bible. I wonder what he did before preaching. Hmm. So, talking to Robert's going to be awkward and talking to Brian's going to be annoying. Let's get it over with. Lance across the yard and notice Robert and Brian chatting over drinks. Man, I don't think I want to be deal, to deal with being one up by Brian or whatever happened with Robert last night. The other night, I guess. Oh no, they caught me staring. Oh no, Brian's waving me over. Shoot. I flash a smile and walk over to them. Hey, guys. Hey. Joseph, how the heck are ya? Settling into the neighborhood alright? Oh, you betcha. Got the living room in order at least. That's great to hear. I've been doing some living room work as well. Finally got the 50 inch in there. The game looks great. Capitalize the game. Looks great in high def. Oh boy. <laughs> Joseph, have you met Robert yet? You can, you can say something like that. Yeah, we've met. Robert regards me over his whiskey. Good seeing you again. Hey. We were just talking about my most recent camping trip. Spent a night out in the woods with Daisy and Maxwell. She's definitely an outdoorsy one. Even caught her first fish. Huh. Good to see you taking your daughter out like that. I bet she loved it. <sighs> and it's great that she loves the outdoors. Mine loves being inside. Brian raises an eyebrow at me. Being inside, making art. She won a competition for that art. Yep. Uh -huh. Did I put it on too strongly? Robert stares at me blankly for a second. I... Anyway. Huh? I haven't gone camping in years. Not since the last time. 
Same here. Well, things change once you have kit. Wait, what happened the last time? Hey. Robert takes a long sip of whiskey. Well, Johnny Boy and me were out in the back country. Johnny Boy's a strong kid. Met him in my army days. Comes from Kansas. They build him tougher out there. Anyway, things go south pretty quick. Johnny Boy breaks his ankle and the rope bridge snaps. Uh-huh. You can see the bone popping out through the skin. Johnny Boy screaming now, crying for his mama, losing blood. We're two days out from the next living soul, and here I am with my dear friend ble- bleeding out in front of me. I'm able to rest rune, but now I got a fireman carry a six foot, 180 pound band over some of the toughest terrain I've ever been in. <sighs> now I'll lie to you, there were moments during those two days when I thought of leaving old Johnny Boy. But you build a bond with your brothers in arms, and that bond never breaks. I got that boy back to civilization. But I lost some of me out there. Mm. I guess that's camping for you. No. Not not generally, no. Brian and I stare in disbelief. Robert takes another long sip of whiskey. Hey. I'm just kidding. My friend John and I went air tubing down a river and he lost a flip-flop. Miss that kid. <laughs> hey. Brian and I laugh nervously. Or am I kidding? Hmm. Brian and I tense up again. Oh. I'm kidding. Hey. Two. <laughs> Amanda and Daisy barrel up to us, laughing. Daisy is holding a paper plate in front of her like a steering wheel. We gotta get off this haunted truck. <laughs> oh no, the ghost locked the doors. Yes. Quick, hit the emergency escape button. But trucks don't have emergency escape buttons. Uh, then hit the brake, I guess, and get out of the truck. Eh? The imaginary truck. Eh. Anyway, we're safe from the ghost, but now, how will we ever survive in this arctic tundra? Daisy, you you might have to eat me. Are you prepared to do that? Hmm? I'm prepared to do anything to survive. Eh. That's cold-blooded. I like that. Although I'm not sure I have the materials required to properly cook you. You know, that reminds me of the last time I went skiing. Robert? Hey. Wait a second, are you guys playing long haul ice road paranormal ghost truckers? Yeah. I won't lie, I would watch that show. Panda and I love that show. Yeah. The best, especially that episode where Callum hides Flint's keys and. Flint retaliates by breaking an ancient cursed urn and sending the spirit after him. Yeah, it's such quality reality television. I don't watch a whole lot of television, but I do enjoy that show. That and war documentaries. <laughs> Alright, Daisy. I found us a couple of bugs, and they're going to make a great meal. Lots of protein. Going to keep us from starving out here in this harsh, icy wasteland. But there's a whole table food of food right over... Th- Daisy, it's a game. We're playing. Pretend. It's what kids do. <laughs> Live a little. Amanda gives Daisy a handful of gummy worms for the sna- snack table. They eat them with mock disgust. Go find kindling for a fire. Yes. Okay. <laughs> but not an actual fire. Because we're playing pretend? Yes. Now you're getting it. Daisy and Amanda run off. What a cute couple of kids. <laughs> Man, I've never seen her get along with anyone so quickly. I guess Amanda just sort of has a wave with kids. That's kind of amazing. Daisy doesn't really get along with kids her age. Hmm. Nice that he's not trying to one-up me this time. Maybe we can have a regular friendship after all. Really? She just kind of keeps to herself. Her teachers say she spends every recess in the library. I think the other kids are intimidated by her intelligence. There it is. I wouldn't worry about it too much. Amanda was shy at Daisy age too. She used to have her habit of crawling under tables and crying every time she we took her to a restaurant. She bit people too. Uh-huh. <laughs> Kids, right? Gotta love them. You're required to by law. I hear that. <laughs> well, since they're getting along so well, maybe we should try to put together a little play date for them. They do seem to get along really well, but the thought of continually hearing about all of Brian's accomplishments is rough. 
Yeah, that would be nice. <laughs> well, I don't want to take up too much of your time. Go meet some of the, the other fellas. Yeah, let's go um... elsewhere. Matt and Hugo seem to be embroiled in an intense discussion. Craig looks on, smiling politely. I walk over to say hello. Well, I don't think it's fair to try and compare the two two art movements like that. Periods in art only exist because they're a unique byproduct of the social and political climate of a time and place. To try to take something like, say, Rococo period and compare it to postmodernism in America, you're completely disregarding the context in, in which a work is created. Matt and Hugo seem to be so busy talking that they don't notice me. Craig leans in. Dude, I have no idea what's happening. Um, Craig's nice and all, and he's he's kind of kind of hot, but I'm an art nerd, so I'm gonna listen to Matt and Hugo. Hmm. That kind of comparison just eliminates the reason art movements are so important in the first place. Hmm. You're not wrong, but I think there's no harm in comparing one work of art to another. You could definitely say one painting is better than another if you're evaluating technical skill from a purely formalist standpoint. If I showed you a Matisse, and then something by the Dust Masters, which one would you say shows more technical prowess? Mm -hmm. So lost right now. I shoot a worried glance over to Craig who returns it. Eh. Well, sure, you could say the Dutch masters were technically more skilled, but I would argue that while the Dutch masters were better painters, Matisse had better paintings overall. So, we're going to try to not make an ass out of ourselves. Um. How do you mean? Uh, well, that painting of the guy with the apple in front of his face is pretty nice. Matisse rocks. That's Magret. Oh. That's Magret. Right. Art. Sorry. You're fine, dude. Uh. We were just discussing the importance of context when talking about artwork, which I would agree with. Listen, all I asked if it was if you liked Van Gogh or Picasso better. Um... He could throws up his hands in frustration. Van Gogh, by the way. Gotta go with Van Gogh. I like Picasso, but Van Gogh. But they represent two completely different art movements. How could I possibly choose between the thick, creamy impasto of post-impressionism and the abstractionist beauty of cubism? Which do you like better? I mean, that's why it's objective. Also, as an aside, there are some very pretty men. Man, that's all way above my head. Mm -hmm. Me too. Hey. Yeah, it's all good, man. The cool thing about art is that we all perceive it differently. A single piece could have a totally different effect on each person that looks at it. And that's awesome. Ah. Just one minute about that. Hugo, please. Ah. Sorry, sorry. I get really fired up about art stuff. Joseph, how are you liking the neighborhood? It's pretty nice. Everybody's been super friendly. And everybody lives in my cul-de-sac, apparently. Hey. Seems like your daughter is fitting in just fine. Matt points across the yard where Amanda, Daisy, and another young girl are playing. They're all sitting cross-legged in the grass, picking weeds weeds and weaving them into little flower crowns. It's pretty adorable. Girl I don't recognize jogs over to us. Hey. What is it, sweetheart? Oh my god, she's adorable. I love her glasses. It's a flower crown. I thought you'd look cute in it. Oh. Well, there's only one way to find out. Matt takes a flower crown and places it on top of his head. Hey. Am I cool now? Very. The girl stares at him, thinking it over. Mm, nope, but you're slightly less uncool than you were before. But when, than you were before you put it on. Come on, he's got tattoos and everything. He's he's definitely cool. Hey. Ah. Hey, Joseph. This is my daughter. Hello. I'm Car Carmen Sita. 
Amanda comes over with Daisy in tow. Dad, look, I'm making friends. <laughs> Are you making friends? You better be making friends. Yeah, actually, Amanda, you remember the cool barista from the coffee shop and my old college friend and, um, ah. your teacher? Oh, hi, Mr. Vega. I didn't realize we were neighbors. Ah. Yep. You still gonna get me that overdue perm paper? Dad. Haha, <laughs> great seeing you. Amanda finger guns her way out of the conversation like a champ. She learned the finger guns move from me, and I'm very proud. Oh. He's definitely a charmer. Speaking of which, where did my son go? Whoa. Hugo looks around the party. You must finally spot him because his eyes go wide. Sweet Manchego! Ernest. Ernest Heming... Oh my. Ernest Hemingway Vega. Are you smoking? Oh. Ernest is holding a lit cigarette. Nope. I see Ernest across the way. He casually takes a long drag of his cigarette and flicks it into a gutter. Hmm. Unbelievable. Excuse me. Hugo marches over to Ernest and I turn my attention to Matt and Craig. Kids, right? Hey. Man, I do not envy Hugo. Last at barbecue we had, Ernest tried to shove a sparkler down Joseph's fans. Other Joseph. This is a little confusing. Okay. Nearly burned down half the yard. Oh. And the barbecue we had before that, he actually burned down half the yard. And then it spread onto my lawn and burned down half my yard, too. Ah. Uh. Hugo walks back over to us, practically dragging Ernest behind him. Oh. Hey, everybody. Sorry about that. Joseph, this is my son, Ernest. Hello. Ernest looks away, sulking, his hands shoved deep in his pocket. Hugo nudges him impatiently. Hey. And Ernest has even got the, like, wee little mustache, too. He thinks he's cool. Nice to meet you, Ernest. What grade are you in? Doesn't matter. Oh. Ernest. Okay, okay, I'm in eighth grade. God, are you happy now? I'm sure you were just dying to know. Er, yeah, good for you. Hmm. Can I go now? I'm tired of talking to old dudes who blame my generation for the failing economy. Ouch. <sighs> Ernest. Oh yeah, because I'm totally embarrassing you. Ernest puts in earbuds and storms off to stand in the corner. Well, that was... That was certainly something. He seems nice. Hugo puts his head in his hands and sighs. Hmm. I'm so sorry. He's having a really rough time. As much as I want to be the cool dad, I have to be the authoritarian dad, and he clearly resents me for it. Hmm? I mean, I think as a dad and a teacher, that's about as authoritarian as you can get. Hmm. Honestly, are any of his cool dads? Impossible to be a cool dad. I mean, you're wearing a flower crown, that's, and you got tattoos, that's pretty cool. But I'm cool as a cucumber. Hey, yeah. Uh... See, that right there. You can't say that. I. My kids think I'm cool. But for how long, Craig? How long do we get to be the cool dads? Oh. I, uh, don't know. Yeah, sounds great. I think we just have to accept the fact that as dads, we've become the machine that we once raged against and accept our fate to unironically wear socks with sandals. Your kids may think you're cool now, but the moment they hit pu puberty, you're doomed. Amanda's 18 and she still thinks I'm cool. Hmm. I yell across the yard to my daughter. Amanda, I'm cool, right? Amanda just laughs. She keeps laughing. I see your point. Oh... As much as we all want it, I don't think it's as, it's as important to be a cool dad as it is to be a good dad. We can't all be best friends with our kids. It just doesn't work. I mean, look at me in earnest. Hmm. Our job as parents is to make sure our kids turn out okay. Hmm. Yeah, you're right. It would be nice to have it both ways. Hearing these guys talk about this makes me think of my relationship with Amanda. We get along so well, but there might come a time when we won't... It won't be like that. Is college when that happens? Hey! Don't let us eat up your time, Joseph. Go meet some of the other people around the neighborhood. Oh. 
then without further ado, let's work some magic. Because I met everybody, so I guess it's burger time. Just closes his eyes and takes a deep breath and gets to work. With the greatest fees, he sets patties on the grill, flourishing as he flips his spatula in the air. He's laced on the best grill work I've ever seen. Oh. You guys think this is for my first time in front of a grill? He's working faster now, effortlessly tossing cheese onto patties and perfectly grilling onions on the side. One after another, the dads take notice and, the cra and crowd around Joseph to admire his masterful technique. Hmm? You probably didn't know this, Joseph, but Joseph's not around here for his grillmanship. Ah. He's ungrillievable. I hate you, Ryan. Grow. I've tried to get on his level, but I just can't catch up. I hate all of you. Hey. Let us keep studying his over rare quality about him. Mm. Mustard, we... Uh... I... Make hey. it stop. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Please stop. Yeah. Alright, guys, food's ready. Form an art orderly barbecue. God damn it, Joseph. Hey. It's so wild how all his dads live in the same cul-de-sac. Almost like it's a dating sim or something. Oh. Kinda nice, isn't it? Feels like there's a real community here. Totally helps when you're just a single dad trying to raise a kid. Oh. We're happy to have you here, man. I think you're gonna like this neighborhood a lot. Oh. Plus, Amanda seems to be getting along with all the kids. If she decides to go into the babysitting game, she'll be really make a killing. Mm. Hey, why don't you add us all on Dad Book? Dad Book? Oh. Yeah, it's a great social network for dads to keep in touch with each other. We're all on it, so if you ever need to reach out to anyone, that's the simplest way to do it. Huh. Sorry, I'm just an old-fashioned dad. Social media goes over my head sometimes. <laughs> Don't worry, Bobs. I'll help you figure it out. The rest of the barbecue goes smoothly. We all trade stories and drink beer as our kids play on the lawn. Amanda breaks off a fight between Carmenista, Carmencita and those weird twins. I think they wanted her soul. Amanda and I walk back to our place as the sun sets over the neighborhood. <laughs> Pretty fun party, don't you think? Felt like I was in a networking event. Though, paranormal ice road truckers, I mean, why wouldn't you wish you'd been playing that? <laughs> you and Daisy seemed like you were having a way better time than I was. Yes! Because we were. Mm -hmm. Hey, at least you met some other cool dads. You should, should hit them up on Databook. Maybe I will, if I ever figure out how social media works. I have a good feeling about this place. Me too, Dad. Huh. Man and I rem arrive home with the remnants of our veggie plate. Hmm, seems like nobody was really into the cauliflower. Usually it's a broccoli that nobody touches. Any big plans for this evening? <laughs> Actually, yeah, I'm going out with some friends. Oh. Hmm. Is that okay? Of course. Just keep me posted and be home before midnight. Mm -hmm. You got it. And be careful. <laughs> I will. Make good choices. Hmm. Of course. And call me if you need anything. Ah. Dad, you're not going to do the thing where you wait silently for me to come home in the living room with all the lights off, are you? What? No, I've never done that and I will never do that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you have plans tonight? I, um, my plans were kind of to eat ice cream and watch TV with Amanda, but I'll find something to do. I'm gonna... work on some stuff. You know, dad stuff. I'm just relaxing tonight. Have fun, okay? Ah, great. See you later. Watch Amanda drive off into the night. I really do hope she has fun. Pop down in front of the TV and turn on some wine and dine mastermind with celebrity chef Gavin Chapman. 
Looks like Gavin's making a roasted rack of lamb with rosemary mashed potatoes. That sounds amazing. I'd love to be able to cook like that. Although I think if I was actually good at cooking, I'd use my powers for evil. Like just making baked Alaskas all day instead of any food with of real nutritional substance. Man, Gavin Chapman just caught that thing on fire, but he meant to do it. What a professional. Old flambe. God, why are we such a dork? <laughs> yeah, that one, the, the meat hell was Gordon Ramsay, apparently. That was just a lot of yelling. That's a orange. Man, it's almost midnight. I should check in with Amanda. I sent a text. Hey, kiddo, you good? <clears throat> and this phone is almost always in her hands, so I'm sure she'll respond soon. Unless she's driving home now, in which case I hope she doesn't respond soon, because I definitely taught her better than text and drive. Reach into the freezer and grab an ice cream sandwich. It's a little late for this, but I think I earned it after a long day of socializing. Check my watch again. And then my phone. Nothing yet. Hmm. Okay, see, now I'm worried. Do I call her? Do I call the cops? No, no, it's too soon for that. Just just send a gentle reminder text. What's up? Half an hour passes. Now I'm really worried. The episodes of Gavin Chapman's Meet Hell are not only a sway not only not assuaging my anxiety, but possibly exacerbating it with all the yelling. So I keep pacing around the house waiting for her to come back. Why didn't I find out where she was going? Who she was even with? Why don't I know any of her friends' note phone numbers? Why don't I even know her friends' full names? Who is Emma P? I decide to send her another text. Amanda, please text me and let me know you're okay. I can't help but think all the, of all the awful things that could have happened to her. Oh, thank God, it's her. Amanda opens the door and shuffles in. Finally, finally she's back home. I'm glad she's okay. What's up? We do you thank God you're safe? Ah. Uh, yep. But now that I know she's okay, I'm really mad. Why didn't you answer my texts? Amanda pulls her phone out of her pocket. Hmm. Oh, whoops. I guess I didn't see those. Starts to walk to her room. Amanda Ann. Hmm. Oh. We're pulling out the middle name now? Amanda, you came home an hour and a half after your curfew and you didn't respond to any of my texts? You really freaked me out. I was about to call the cops. Hmm. Dad, you're seriously overreacting. You're not going to be like this when I go off to school, are you? You know, I think this is a time where honesty is probably the best policy. You scared the living bejesus out of me, kid. Wow. Got heavy really quick. Whoa! I sit down on the couch and put my head in my hands. I feel very tired all of a sudden. It really scared me. Just please don't do that again. Ah. Uh. Mm. All right. I'm going to go to bed now. Amanda closes the door to her room and I head to mine. Jeez. As I'm falling asleep, one thing she said keeps echoing in my mind. You're not going to be like this when I go off to school, are you? I definitely didn't sleep well last night. Brew some strong coffee and make some scrambled eggs for Amanda as a peace offering. Uh. She eventually wanders into the kitchen. Hey. Uh. I thought about what she said last night. Huh? I should have texted you. I said I was going to do it, and I didn't. I honestly didn't even think about it. Uh, I'm really sorry, Pops. I won't do it again. Well. I'm not going to apologize for being scared, because she did totally drop the ball. I'm not going to be, like, good, like, you know, it's kind of asshole-like. It will give her the responsibility. She's 18. We have to start trusting her. Gotta 
trust that you can take care of yourself. Aim seed. Aim seed. Amanda gives me a hug. Want some eggs? You know it. Sprinkle some cheese on them. Already did. Bless you. Amanda scarfs down the eggs in the time it takes me to wash the pan. Alright, I'm off to school. Smell you later. Wait, one more thing before you go. What? What's dad book? Dad. The social media platform. Wait. Hmm. What? What's a social media platform? <laughs> dad, I have to go to school. Come on, Amanda, I'm an old man. I can't put together a dad book profile on my own. <sighs> All right, I'll help you sound interesting on the internet. Ugh. Amanda spends the next couple minutes setting up my profile on dad book, which as it turns out, is a place where dads can get together and talk about fatherhood, which is what has already been explained to us, but okay. Ugh. All right, Pops, we got to fill out your profile. Let's get some likes and dislikes. Ooh, we get choices. On a Friday night. Um... <clears throat> yeah, that sounds like a good one. So that would be a lie. Um, a little boring, but where? Yeah, here, here's another uh, Jimmy Buffett joke, just for you, Jancy. Um, I'm gonna go with Castaway on DVD for instructional purposes, though. What are your turn-ons. Okay, so... That's just, you know, I don't care about your lawn. Hmm. Hmm. I don't know. Go with strong dad arms. What did you want to be when you grew up? <clears throat> um, okay, so obviously it's between Pro Skater, who's an Australian astronaut, and the president of space. Um, I think multi, multiple talents are a good thing, so. Favorite movie genre. Wow. That would include the James Bond movies. And Highlander. Unfortunately, it would also include Highlander 2. But, um... Laserdisc is not a genre. Romantic comedies... I don't really get the appeal of sad movies to tell the truth, just like you know, it, my personal self. Um, old comedies that haven't aged well. Mm. I guess we're just going to have to go with John Connery. Plus, you know, John Connery. What's your ideal date? Arson. Arson is my ideal date. Though that's not something I think I would put on a dating profile. I'm trying to geocache, but getting hopelessly lost actually could lead to a lot of fun stuff. It also could lead to, you know, you getting murdered, but... Yeah. Or leave home without a towel. A cool knife. A cripplingly low self-esteem. Wow. Just, you know, why don't we just write, hey, looking for an abusive relationship on our profile. Um, 
vape a sensible card again. Um. Oh, our character seems to be kind of a mess, so I think that's probably the honest answer. Hmm. Spent a lot of time thinking about when I can next get a cup of coffee. I do. <laughs> um, potential ends of the world, that's a little morbid. Um, Right of my child, yeah. I mean, Amanda is pretty cool. I like her. Conspiracy theories. I could go a couple different ways. I mean, there are conspiracy theories that are kind of fun to think about, and then there are conspiracy th theories that are just, like, weird and racist and crap, so. And the flat earth and the, um, moon landing was faked that, that are just patently absurd. So we'll just say how proud we are of a child. Okay. See, that wasn't so bad. Yeah, that was actually kind of fun. I could totally spend on day, all day on here just looking at people's profiles. Yeah! You should message one of them, or maybe more than one of them. All these dads pre seem pretty interesting. Okay. I promise I'll make some friends. Yeah. Amanda gives me a hug. Yeah. Go get him, dad. Welcome! You've got dads! Hmm. Dad Manda. <laughs> each other since business school. How could you possibly confuse me for... You're amazing and talented and easy to buy things for a daughter. Though I am, of course, flattered, you should buy Amanda more things. Amanda, you know I didn't go to business school. I barely even managed to get my degree. Wait. No. Wow. I didn't say that. You never heard that? This is gold. I was a great student, I swear. I graduated at the top of my class because I worked hard and ate all my vegetables. Totally holding on to this for later. Wait, do you even remember what I majored in? I declined to comment. Cool. Alright, so... I think now that we have the advent of Dad Book, it's a good time to stop and save and um, explore start exploring dad book next time hope you enjoyed this um foray into the dad dating sphere and we'll see you next time this is um eldritch mortician of the shirt twins signing off